Good evening and welcome to the 2018 Dr. John W. Harris Teacher of the Year Award Reception. This night is all about you, our 91 honored guests and your family and friends. Tonight you are celebrated with the same high regard as the man for which this name or this award is named. Dr. John W. Harris served as superintendent of the Sioux Falls schools for 24 years. He died in 2002 at the age of 81, but amassed countless awards, honors, and accolades in those 81 years, including having a school named after him in 1991. His obituary noted his compassion and integrity, which allowed him to touch the lives of thousands of students, teachers, and employees, and guide the school system to be one of the finest in the country. Dr. Harris' legacy lives on in Sioux Falls School District through this award and through the compassion and integrity of the teachers we are proud to honor here tonight. This award is only possible thanks to the, generous, thanks to the generosity of Bruce Eide from Vern Eide Motor Cars. Bruce has sponsored this award since its inception, 30 years of sponsoring the Sioux Falls Teacher of the Year Award. Bruce sends his sincere regrets that he had to be out of town for this evening, but we'll be forever grateful for his investment in our teachers. In his place, Michael Larson will be here representing, representing him and helping us present the award to our winner tonight. Let's share our appreciation and applause for all that Bruce Eide continues to do to support our teachers. Again, Michael, thank you for being here in his stead. Our theme for tonight's celebration is captured in this short quote, to be inspired is great, to inspire is incredible. Tonight we are here to honor 91 teachers, up from what we thought was an amazing number of 70 nominees last year, and by far the largest number of nominees in the award's three decades. Our honorees inspire their students, their colleagues, and all of us in this room with their kind hearts, with their encouragement, with their never-ending quest to be a better teacher tomorrow than they are today. Before we continue our celebration of teachers, please enjoy dessert, coffee, and punch to the musical sounds of, of Sioux Falls School District students. This is a group, and I asked Deanne earlier, do they have a name? And she said, no, they just kind of came together because they know each other. Is that right? Kind of know each other, and I guess that's what you do when you're a musician. You just kind of do a gig. And we, tonight, are the gig. So thank you to students from Lincoln High School and Washington High School for being with us tonight. Time is yours. <laughs> As you finish your dessert tonight, we owe a special thank you to the Sioux Falls Public Schools Education Foundation for their donation to partially fund tonight's event. The Volunteer Board of Education Foundation works tirelessly to support our teachers by securing business sponsorships for innovative projects. Since 2008, they have awarded grants to teachers for projects that enhance student learning. They have also given every zero experienced teacher hired in the last five years funds to purchase supplies for their classroom. That amount, which was previously $100, was increased this year to $200 for every brand new teacher. Additional information about the foundation is found on your tables 
And I would encourage you to learn more about our mission to support teaching excellence. Let's hear it for the Education Foundation. Additionally tonight, I would like to give, give a big thank you to SFEA for providing the corsages for each of the finalists and for being here to greet our guests this evening. Pam, to you and your folks, thank you. Also, a thank you goes out to Jeff Little and Ben Schumacher for filming tonight's reception and contributing their talents in creating the finalist video presentation, which we'll all have an opportunity to see later in the program. In addition, portions from tonight's reception, along with the finalist video and an interview with our ultimate winner, will be included in a segment that will air on KLRN TV next month. A special thank you tonight uh, as well to the five judges who spent many hours reading and rereading the nominations and coming together to select the finalists and this year's winner. I want you to please stand and be recognized as I announce your name. First, Janet Swear. Janet is a teacher at Washington High School and a former Teacher of the Year winner. And if you'll allow me, Janet, I'm going to paraphrase what you said. When we first came together to talk about how do we go from 91 to 5 to 1, Janet said, man, if I would have known there was this much involved in the selection process, I would have appreciated this award even more a couple of years ago. <laughs> There's a lot to this. There really, really is. Jenny Doyen. Jenny is a member, member of the Sioux Falls Area Chamber of Commerce. Thank you, Jenny. Michael Larson. Michael is the Director of Human Resources for Vern ID Motor Cars. Thank you, Michael. Mitchell Olson. Mitchell is the tallest member of our judges panel. <laughs> and also a resident of Sioux Falls. Thanks so much for your participation in this. And Todd Tolke. Todd is a member of the Sioux Falls Board of Education. To you five, thanks for your tremendous effort and job well done on this process. Thank you very much. One more item of gratitude and then we'll get on with it. Uh, but I would be remiss if I didn't say thank you to the school board, our board of education in the Sioux Falls Public Schools. All five members are here with us tonight, I think lending testament to how important this night is to our school district and certainly to our board of education. With us here tonight, and please stand and remain standing, our, uh, our board president, Kate Parker, our vice president, Kent Alberti, and our board members, Cynthia Mickelson, Carly Ryder, and Todd Tolke. To all of you, thanks for all of you do, all you do for the Sioux Falls School District. <laughs> and at this time, I turn the mic over. Please welcome to the school board president and vice president, Kate Parker and Kent Alberti. Sorry, you're going to have to move it back up, Kent, when I leave. I'll just stand down here. <laughs> About the same height. I don't want to stand next to our, our Sioux Falls resident that was on the committee. <laughs> Not going to do that. Anyway, good evening. Since the Teacher of the Year program began in 1989, more than 500 teachers have been recognized as nominees and finalists, and 29 of them have previously been named Teacher of the Year. These 29 outstanding teachers represent various backgrounds and areas of specialty, and each possesses effective teaching skills and a passion for their profession. A number of them are with us tonight. I invite these distinguished teacher, distinguished Teacher of the Year alumni to stand and be recognized as we honor your legacy. <coughs> Please rise. Now, since we have a very impressive 91 people, 
Um, we will begin recognizing the first 45 nominees and take a little break. Um, and we'd ask you to approach to the right of the podium and return to your seat by the way of the left side of the podium. Is that my right or left? They're, they're right. Deanne? Okay, thank you. <laughs> stage right, stage left. Okay. All right, and hopefully I won't butcher any names. All right. All right, A.J. Menden, Special Education, Whittier Middle School. Alicia Baus, Child Development, Washington High School. Amanda Kutzmick, fourth grade, R.F. Pettigrew. Amy Drakey, kindergarten, R.F. Pettigrew. Andrea Thorson, 8th grade, Language Arts, Patrick Henry Middle School. <laughs> Ann Hayek, 2nd grade, Oscar Howe. <laughs> Ann Okins, Vocal Music, Oscar Howe. <laughs> Anna Hakeman, Instrumental Music, Whittier Middle School. Ashley Martin, Kindergarten, Eugene Field. <laughs> Ashley Miller, Early Childhood, Annie Sullivan. <laughs> Becky Davis, Kindergarten, Susan B. Anthony. <laughs> Bobby Greenfield, Second Grade, Sonia Sotomayor. Bridget Sees, 5th grade, Rosa Parks. <laughs> Catherine Regis, Personal Finance, Roosevelt High School. <laughs> Charles Weiss, 6th grade, Science, Memorial Middle School. <laughs> Christine Griebel, Gifted Education, Sonia Sotomayor. Daniel Carlson, High School Band, Lincoln High School. <laughs> Daniela Moscoso, third grade, Sonia Sotomayor. <laughs> Deborah Hodges, third grade, Discovery Elementary. Edir Montoya, 6th grade science, Edison Middle School. <laughs> Emily Stee, 3rd grade, Eugene Field. <laughs> Emily Tompkins, 3rd grade, Harvey Dunn. <laughs> Aaron Matheson, 1st grade, Hayward Elementary. Esperanza Langley, Kindergarten, Sonia Sotomayor. <laughs> Frederick Reiner, Speech One, Washington High School. George Hawkins, U.S. History, New Tech High. Grant Scouten, Eighth Grade Math, Whittier Middle School. Heather Crosby, Art, Lowell Elementary. <laughs> Jamie Coda, Science ELL, George McGovern Middle School. <laughs> Jennifer Breidenbaugh, second grade, RF Pettigrew.
Jennifer Castillo, Kindergarten, Sonia Sotomayor. Jennifer Mayer, Algebra One, Washington High. Jennifer Spencer, Vocal Music, Patrick Henry Middle School. Jarrah Potter, fifth grade, Robert Frost Challenge Center. Je uh, Jeremy Iverson, seventh grade, Social Studies, Edison Middle School. Jeremy Wiebersick, sixth grade, Social Studies, Whittier Middle School. Jessica Kanigi, Kindergarten, Robert Frost Elementary. Jill Peichel, Rise, Vocal, Vocal Skills, Roosevelt High School. Jill Seeler, Fifth Grade, Discovery Elementary. Jolene Hillbrands, Kindergarten, Harvey Dunn Elementary. <laughs> Julie Sear, third grade, Harvey Dunn Elementary. <laughs> Carrie Papke, Algebra One, Washington High. <laughs> Catherine Kilrick, Special Ed, Susan B. Anthony. As we take a moment to catch our breath and get things reset, please welcome Steve McFarland. Steve is a community education instructor who teaches guitar, banj banjo, and ukulele. Nominations and letters of support for our nominees were submitted by colleagues, parents, principals, and students. This support shows us clearly that they are dedicated to helping us meet our mission to educate and prepare each student to succeed in our changing world. And now for the second half of our nominees, again, please approach the stage on your right and a return to your left. And I'll apologize in advance on the outside chance that I make a mistake with pronunciation on a name. Um, <clears throat> Casey Halbersma, Kindergarten, RF Pettigrew Elementary. Kelly Iverson, sixth grade math, Edison Middle School. Kelsey Nicholson, third grade, Robert Frost Elementary. Kimberly Euchre, early childhood, RF Pettigrew Elementary. Kimberly Hankel, first grade, Discovery Elementary. Christy Hauk, fifth grade, Susan B. Anthony. Kristen Dykstra, first grade, John Harris Elementary.
Leonardo, Leonardo Bohorez, fifth grade, Sonia Sotomayor Elementary. <laughs> Leticia Miranda, fifth grade, Sonia Sotomayor Elementary. <laughs> Lindsay Weaver, third grade, R.F. Pettigrew Elementary. Lorena Pantoja, 4th grade, Sonia Sotomayor Elementary. <laughs> Lucas Bartolome, 3rd grade, Sonia Sotomayor Elementary. <laughs> Lamari Robles, 4th grade, Sonia Sotomayor Elementary. Lynette Wagner, Kindergarten, Rosa Parks Elementary. <laughs> Mallory Bigtrup, Early Childhood, RF Pettigrew Elementary. <laughs> Maria Nye, Special Education, Sonia Sotomayor Elementary. Mark Dunbar, Carpentry One, CTE Academy. <laughs> that, that was not me. <laughs> Megan Bolkin, Kindergarten, Susan B. Anthony Elementary. <laughs> Megan Jaquit, Culinary, CTE Academy. Megan McManus, third grade, RF Pettigrew Elementary. <laughs> Megan Wounded Head, English II, Washington High School. <laughs> Melissa Rock, first grade, Susan B. Anthony Elementary. Michael Powers, Spanish One, Roosevelt High School. <laughs> Millie Brower, fourth grade, Robert Frost Challenge Center. <laughs> Nicole Gardner Fink, third grade, Harvey Dunn Elementary. <laughs> Robin Kappenman, kindergarten, Laura Wilder Elementary. Sarah Weebelhouse, Kindergarten, Susan B. Anthony Elementary. Sarah Anderson, Third Grade, Oscar Howe Elementary. Sarah Leonard, Psychology, Roosevelt High School. Sarah Stocky, Health Careers One, CTE Academy. Sharon Andrews, sixth grade science, Edison Middle School. <laughs> Sheremy Haas, second grade, Harvey Dunn Elementary. <laughs> Sonia Wadenbach, early childhood, Harvey Dunn Elementary. <laughs> Stacy Sipp, orchestra, Edison Middle School. Stephanie Fruit, third grade, Hayward Elementary. <laughs> Tara Statham, vocal music, Patrick Henry Middle School. <laughs> Taylor Jensen, kindergarten, Laura Wilder Elementary. Travis Gary, sixth grade social studies, Patrick Henry Middle School. <laughs> Tyler Fitz, modern US history, Roosevelt High School. <laughs> Vanessa Granning, second grade, Sonia Sotomayor Elementary. <laughs> 
Victor Naranjo, Kindergarten, Sonia Sotomayor Elementary. <laughs> Whitney Harnock, Special Edu Pardon me, Special Education English, Roosevelt High School. <laughs> Jenny Ruiz, Kindergarten, Sonia Sotomayor Elementary. recognize these teachers again for their outstanding service. And now for our finalists. Each of our five finalists has a unique perspective on their mission and what it means for them to be a teacher. Let's take a few minutes to watch as they learned they were a finalist and to hear from those who believe their finalist should be the teacher of the year. There are screens on either end. My name is Shannon Rook and I nominated Kim Dobson as the 2018 Teacher of the Year. Mrs. Dobson has just always stuck out to me. I've seen her work her magic as a special education teacher, an integration specialist, and I can say that I have learned a lot from her through the years. Our district's Structured Teach program is designed to work with students who have cognitive limitations and who are experiencing some behavioral challenges which can make it difficult for them to succeed in their regular school. Kim is extremely patient and kind and encouraging and a big go-getter. She's always willing to help and go above and beyond. And to be honest, I don't know if words can even do her justice. I think you just have to have worked with her or need to go see it to believe it. We as teachers, we don't know every detail about our students when they come in the doors, nor can we fully understand the conditions that they may have to be going home to. But Kim is always sure to provide them with patience, support, understanding, and always treats them with dignity. Her position as a structured teach teacher requires a great deal of grit and perseverance daily. Kim has worked really hard and given her all for several years within our district, and I feel I can speak for others in saying that she's truly the best of the best at what she does. And in a heartbeat, she would say that she absolutely loves what she does. I'm Dana Berg and I'm nominating Chris Hansen for Teacher of the Year. She truly has shown so much love to my child and all other 26 children in her classroom. She uses all of their personal interests and all of the things that they know and cherish and are interested in and she uses that and she delves into instruction and she meets every child right where they're at. She truly grasps the mission of the school district which is to educate every child and shows them um, so much love and passion for the learning. It's incredible. You walk into her classroom and you feel the warmth and the caring and the kindness. And that's not only seen between Chris and the students, it's seen from student to student. And she takes so much time 
from day one in the classroom with those kids to help build those relationships so that learning can take place. Our daughter will come home and the things that she says just fill my heart. She says, I called Mrs. Hansen mom today. My child, uh, the growth that she has shown in math and reading and the data shows us that and I'm excited but I think Chris is even more excited, and uh, rightfully so, because she knows her students, she knows where they're at, she does everything instructionally to help them grow. Chris is phenomenal, she's an amazing human being, and we're so blessed to have her as a part of Rosa Parks and the Sioux Falls School District. My name is Sherry Cavistro. I nominated Stacy Monarch for Teacher of the Year. Building relationships is one of the key qualities that makes Stacy an effective teacher. Stacy takes the time to build relationships with her students. And through building these relationships, she's able to identify interests, strengths, and needs of each of the students that are in her classroom. She designs her lessons to target the learning needs of students. And by doing this, students remain fully engaged from the start of the lesson to the finish. Stacy seeks ideas through collaborating with other teachers and staff on how everyone can work together to best meet the needs of students. She truly values others' opinions and is always willing to learn herself. Stacy continuously demonstrates a positive attitude and enthusiasm. People enjoy being around her and having her as part of their team. You know, I guess that's from just day one. When students walk into her classroom, she values them as individuals and as learners. And so it doesn't matter if a student is not proficient in the English language or if a student has specific learning challenges. She accepts them and she really identifies where they're at learning wise and she works with them from that point and really works to um, move them and help them learn as an individual wherever they are. And it's through these relationships that students develop a trust and deep respect for Stacy as their teacher. I'm Trisha Runyon and I am nominating Julie Sternholm for Teacher of the Year. She's dedicated to her students. She instills a love of learning that carries throughout their lifetime. She goes above and beyond the call of duty. She makes every child in her classroom feel special and feel like she believes in them and makes them believe in themselves. Not only for the year that they're in the classroom, but my oldest daughter, who's now a freshman in high school, has received a postcard every fall from her with a word of encouragement for her next school year. She still says that she hopes when she's a senior that she can come back and work in Ms. Sternholm's class because she's the best teacher she's ever had. The same is true for my middle daughter who's in seventh grade and my youngest daughter. We've been truly blessed to have such a wonderful teacher who takes the time to get to know our kids and make each and every single one of them feel special. I am also a teacher at the school that she works at. She always has a smile on her face in the hallway, staff meeting. She's always bubbly, has an encouraging word. She's a teacher that I look up to and I strive to get the communication with my parents like she has. She's always positive. Um, she's a teacher I know that will help any colleague out if they need help. She's an awesome teacher and I couldn't be more happy with what she's done for my three girls and everything she's taught me as a teacher myself. I'm Austin Meyer and I nominated Lynn Thomason for Teacher of the Year. There is no other teacher that has helped me more in all of my education than Mrs. Thomason. She has been a mentor for me. She has been a, a teacher for me. She has been a friend, and I honestly would not be where I am today without her help. She is the most compassionate human being you could ever meet. Um, she will do absolutely anything to make sure that her students are successful. It's kind of neat to figure out how language all fits together. It's this puzzle, and Mrs. Thomason does a really good job of showing us how we got to where we are today. My freshman year, I realized I wanted to be in band and choir, a choir ensemble and a jazz band, and I also wanted to do four years of a foreign language. <laughs> and that would be impossible to do under the constraints of what classes we need to schedule. So I went to Mrs. Thomason and she helped me figure out my schedule so I could take 
the classes I wanted to take. Lots of people see her as the same motherly figure that I see her as. She's helped them with scheduling. She's helped them through their personal problems as well. She's been their cheerleader when nobody else was a cheerleader. Literally anybody who is willing to put forth that work, they, she will help them out and help them be ex as successful as they can be. She made me realize that I wanted to become an educator throughout all the times that I've been in her room helping out students after school or when we go to Old Gorman High School and tutor Latin students there. I, I, got, I got to learn a lot about teaching and I realized that that's what I want to do. deserved round of applause to the five of you. Finalists, as we read your name, please come forward and to receive your gift and a voucher for $100 to use as you wish in your classrooms. Kimberly Dobson, Horace Mann Elementary. <laughs> Christy Hansen, Rosa Parks Elementary. Stacey Monarch at Cleveland Elementary. <laughs> Julie Sternholm, RF Pettigrew Elementary. <laughs> Lynn Thomason, Lincoln High School. Congratulations to the five finalists. Congratulations again to all of our nominees and finalists. As previous, previously mentioned, Bruce Idy is the reason we are able to gather here tonight to celebrate education. In the spirit of the school business partnership he has nurtured through the years, we also invite Michael Larson to come forward as Bruce's representative. Further, if the remaining school board members and Dr. Maher can come forward also in preparation of the announcement. That means you too, Kate and Carly. You know that was one of the funnest days was going out with Dr. Maher and uh, making the announcement of the five finalists. That was a real pleasure. You know, as school board members, one of the most sought after committees that we have is the Teacher of the Year Committee. Um, we all really want that job because not only is it, is it inspiring to read 91 nominations, um, but it's really hard to choose the winner. In the nominations submitted on behalf of the person, words like master teacher, mentor, mom to other staff are used to describe her. Now you know it's a girl. <laughs> her principal says she is the first to arrive and the last to leave, always checking on others' teachers' needs and their hearts. Our winner believes Every student can be successful. Despite cognitive delays, despite a student's lack of self-regulation -reg and occasional aggression, she has changed the lives of her students. By giving them the tools and the life skills they need to maximize their academic potential and thrive in sometimes difficult social environments. On behalf of Vernity Motor Cars of the Sioux Falls and the Sioux Falls School District, I am proud to present the plaque 
and a $4,000 check to our winner of the 2018 Dr. John W. Harris Teacher of the Year, Kim Dotson. I would like to thank the sponsors of tonight for honoring teachers and recognizing them for so many years. So thank you, Vernity, and the Sioux Falls School District. This is my um, 25th year of teaching in the Sioux Falls School District, and I'd like to thank the parents who have shared their children with me. I'd like to thank the children it's, that it's been my honor and privilege to work with. It's those kids who have made me have to think outside of the box. If they weren't able to learn, how could we get them to learn? Or if they weren't able to emotionally regulate, what self-calming strategies could we teach them? Or if they weren't able to interact appropriately with their peers, how could we help facilitate that? I'd also like to thank um, the district for the wonderful professional development. I'd like to thank special education supervisors administrators, teachers, educational assistants, and related service people, people who I have looked up to over the years as mentors, people who I've worked together on um, teams with to help meet the needs of students. I would like to thank um, Horace Mann staff. Horace Mann is an awesome place to work. It's a very positive, welcoming, warm environment. Everyone in that building, no matter your title or your position, is excited that when the students come through the door, we not only focus on helping them academically, but also teaching them socially. At Horace Mann, we have great collaboration. We can debate whether that is the way um, Boys Town wanted us to implement something with fidelity or not. We challenge each other. We're also there. I have to be honest, you know, we have our tough moments at Horace Mann, sometimes our tough days, and we're there when something is a little tougher to support one another, to lend a helping hand, or to give a hug. We're there to praise each other. We're there to support each other. It's just a great place. I can't imagine working anyplace else. And I want to thank my family, my parents, when they supported me going into special education, my husband, Derek, and my two boys, DJ and Zach. When you marry a teacher, sometimes you don't know what you're in for. <laughs> when DJ was younger and we'd get him to bed and I'd stay up for a while working on schoolwork, you know, he had a job where you punch in and punch out. He didn't understand that at first. But over time, my husband and my boys truly understand that you just need to do what's best for your students and they support that. And when you marry a teacher, you also don't know the stories that you're gonna hear. You have to be a good listener. And there are people who listen and people who are active listeners. And I really wanna thank my husband because I'll get a phone call from him and he'll say, I'm at Walmart picking up dog food. He goes, I went down the toy aisle and I found that um, bumblebee transformer that your student wants to play with and, and pay for with his points. So I picked it up. So he's a great guy, he really supports me. And um, I'm just very, very fortunate because I truly love my job. Every day when my alarm clock goes off and I get up, I'm excited and eager to go to work. And that's due to the Sioux Falls School District and the staff at Horace Mann Elementary. So thank you. I never understand why they have me get up and speak after that. <laughs> wow, what a great job. Now, are DJ and Zach are here, did I see them? Now, if I'm not mistaken, I think they've already got that spent. <laughs> that's kind of that's the way what I was hearing there, so. Congratulations to you, and congratulations to all of our finalists tonight. Thanks so much for being here, everybody. I wanna thank you for coming this evening to share, to support, to encourage and to be all about teaching excellence. As you've witnessed here tonight, to be inspired is great, to inspire is incredible. My sincere thanks to each one of you for being incredible. May the joy and positive energy that you just heard about and that you feel in this room tonight 
sustain you for the rest of this year and for your entire career. Thanks again for coming. Thanks again to, to uh, Vern ID Motors and to Bruce ID. And have a great evening, everybody. You know, I was just honored to be on, nominated on the list of 91. And so then when I made the top five, I was shocked. I was just, there are so many wonderful teachers in the Sioux Falls School District. And so it's, it's, it's just an honor. Structure Teach meets the needs of a wide variety of students. Um, some of our students have cognitive impairments, so that means their IQ is 73 or below. So they just have a harder time learning to read and to write and to do their math. Um, some kids don't necessarily have that cognitive impairment. They may have autism. And so Structured Teach provides that structure, that predictability, that consistency that some kids with autism um, need to thrive and to grow and to learn. Um, and um, uh, some of our other kids just have, well, all of our students actually have, you know, behavioral challenges. And so we just take them in and we really work on appropriate social skills. So we may teach them how to follow directions. It may be accepting no. It may be um, using our words, keeping our hands and feet to ourselves, um, working with others, using appropriate voice tone. And so we not only focus on academics, like all teachers do, but just as equally as our focus on academics is that focus on the social skills. To be a good teacher in a behavior program, relationships is the most important thing. You have to establish that relationship. You have to get to know the student. They need to know you. They need to trust you. You have to have that relationship so that um, you can help them during their toughest times, you know, with their biggest challenges. And so you want to get that relationship established. But yes, our ultimate goal is that we can get them back in their neighborhood school. Well, when I was in high school, I went to a Gorman High School here in Sioux Falls, and I had a Christian service class. And so back then, that's when South Sioux was open, and that was a school that just was a school for kids with cognitive impairments. And I did volunteer work there. And I just fell in love working with kids with special needs. And so then through my college years, I continued to volunteer there. And you know, so in high school, that's when I knew that I wanted to go into special education. And then I um, went to Augustana College, and then I graduated and I got a job in the Sioux Falls School District. And back then, they called it, um, LRE, least restrictive environment, but it was basically um, kids with, you know, learning challenges. And so I started out at um, LBA, it was my first school, then they moved the program, I just followed the program. I went from LBA to Horace Mann here, and then I went from Horace Mann to um, John Harris, and then so I taught, I think, for about 12 years it, with kids with cognitive impairments. And then I left the classroom for a short while and I was integration specialist and autism team leader. So I focused in on really um, helping individuals who help kids with autism. I did autism screens, autism evals. I coordinated the discrete, discrete trial program. It's a, an approach that we use with kids who have autism. And so I did that for probably about seven years and then I really missed the kids. So I went back to the classroom, taught Cluster, which is now called RISE. And um, then I actually left the district for two years and I taught at the college level. But I really missed the, the students, the, the young kids, and I missed the action of the classroom. And so then that's what brought me to Horace Mann here, um, the behavior program. The most rewarding is just having those relationships with the students, you know, um, seeing their eyes light up when they understand something or when they use their words and praising them and then they go, um, you know, oh, I, I did that, I used my words and just giving them the skills that they need to be successful, you know, in the, um, in the school setting, in their home, in the community. You know, I just want people to know that Horace Mann is a warm, welcoming, um, kind, loving environment and we really just take the kids in where they are and we look at their strengths and we look at their needs and then we, you know, devise a program to really improve those needs. And, um, you know, we do a lot of wonderful things for kids on a daily basis here in this program. And it's just, you know, extremely rewarding. We have a great group of teachers here. Um, you know, we, we come together, we collaborate, we'll have really good discussions about, you know, is that what Boys Town meant? Are we implementing this with fidelity? We will talk about our, our data during um, um, co collaboration and common planning time and talk about, you know, oh, this student's making gains, this one isn't, you know, how can we change that instruction? What can we do to better uh, meet their needs, you know, not only academically but socially too. Well, you know, I've come across many people who have been mentors to me, people who do what I do, are willing to help other people, you know, teach them a skill, teach them some knowledge, um, give them some experience. Um, I, um, I, um, 
you know, just believe that it's um, so important to, to help others. I believe that the district has done a wonderful job of um, providing professional development. When I left the classroom and I was autism team leader, I had opportunities to, you know, get trained in discrete trials. And so the district has provided us with wonderful resources and knowledge and experiences to help us become better teachers. The great feeling I get about my job, you know, working with the kids, helping them learn and helping them grow. And I feel as a you know, veteran teacher that if I can share any knowledge or experience I have with the younger teachers coming on board, I'm going to take that time to do that because I don't think people should reinvent the wheel. You know, if I've done something, if I know something, I'm happy to you know, help them write that IEP goal or I'm happy to help them understand their test scores or you know, write a good report or I'm happy to brainstorm. Um, sometimes people, just because of my professional experience with autism, people will come to me and say, you know, this is what happened, what could I do about that, what strategy could I use? And I'm, you know, more than happy to share that information with other people because, you know, my goal isn't just to help my own students learn, but to help all students learn. You know, it's the students that drive me, it's the students that when I wake up in the morning, that's the reason that I want to come to school, because um, they're all so unique and interesting in their own way, and they all have wonderful strengths, and they all have some areas that we want to grow on, and so it's just, um, you know, I take that and I, I look at that child and I figure out how can I make those needs turn into strengths, and, you know, just help them become the best person they can be.